What's going on, everybody? We should be on time, close to on time. I'm a minute late. That's not so bad for me. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. If you're not familiar, this is STL Sunday. The point of STL Sunday is I go through and pick a project and model it live in 3D, kind of go through my thought process, how I do things. We'll be using, using Fusion 360, which is a free CAD program that you can download. I'll link to it in the description below. It is free, at least currently in the US. I'm not sure about all countries. I've heard in some places it's not available for free. So uh, I don't have a good replacement for you in those situations, but maybe you can find something. The one thing is, is that 3D modeling, once you kind of get the hang of one program or kind of look at how somebody does something in one program, it is similar in a lot of other programs. So it's not a hundred percent, you know, imperative that you're using the same program. So thanks everybody uh, again for joining. Today, we've got a couple of projects in mind, a couple of just different fun and, you know, why not style projects. One of them, I forgot what they it was already at this point. I'm... <laughs> going in. I know one of them we were going to do just like a cement mixer just because Matt actually suggested it while he and I were talking. Oh yeah. And then the other one was a welding cart. So we'll do a welder on the cart with a, you know, some sort of gas bottle on the back, little, another shop fun tool. Thanks everybody for checking in. We'll see where everybody's coming from. Yes. I was a minute late, not bad. And for me, that's pretty good. Um, and yeah, we're, uh, we'll, we'll catch up here on the latency side of things. The delay is always, that's one of these things with, especially with live CAD, you might see me doing something or not doing something and you'll be wanting to text or, you know, type in a message, but that was 30 some odd seconds ago by the time I actually was doing that thing. So we're going to Let's make a change. Jump over to Fusion and we're going to start a new document. So just a basic blank. Let's fix this a little bit. Basic blank or er, document, blank document. No jet ski. No, I know that was a, that was a good suggestion. And I, I thought about that a little bit more just because that does sound fun. And I it's, think it's something that I want to play with a little bit not live because just the shape of the whole of a jet ski has a number of compounding arcs to it. And it's not exact. I mean, I could simplify it and make it jet ski enough, but it's always one of those when someone throws out something like that, it's like, oh, it's, that's a, that's an interesting idea and something I, I wouldn't mind like actually trying to think through and see what the shape of a jet ski hole should really be like to try and replicate it the best I could. So uh, Rhode Island, Michigan, Connecticut, Virginia, Pennsylvania, uh, Spokane. So, well, okay. We got East coast and West coast. I was like, man, everybody's on the East coast today. Uh, what was the CJ grill for? Uh, that's just a, a new project, uh, thinking about doing for a class one. So just started, this was a project I just started drawing actually before the stream, just kind of getting ready. What this was another instance where I brought in a photo. So this is just a, a photo of a replacement CJ grill. And then I just started tracing and trying to make it look as, as good as possible. And that was the grill that were remaining. So hopefully in the end that will turn into a, an interesting project, but there's a lot of work to go before that is an actual, an actual, uh, piece that's going to be usable. Canada, UK, Kentucky, Ohio, Portland. Now we're getting everywhere. Ontario, South Carolina, Missouri. Nice. Thanks again. So let's start with, uh, John and KC. Everyone says, everyone say hi to Nicole. Yes, she is weird. She has no interest in watching me draw in CAD, right? So let's, let's start drawing something. Let's start with our cement mixer, just because that was just kind of the, the fun project should be fairly quick and simple. I'm going to start with the drum of a cement mixer. Let me open up a 
another document and or not another document another a CAD window sorry CAD I can't talk even I'm looking for a image of a cement mixer how about that now that I can finally get a word out this is what I'm looking at here sorry looks decent and now I need to get all my things back so I can see what you guys are actually saying all right I apologize so this is what we're what I'm looking for something like this so I'm gonna start with this drum section we're gonna kind of go from there this is gonna be pretty simple but just another simple 3d printed project so yeah we're gonna so since we're gonna do that drum I'm going to we're gonna start with the the bottom of the drum and we're gonna make that thing kind of have a I want to revolve this cylinder so fairly flat small radius at the bottom straight up flare to the top okay so we're gonna simplify and then we'll just shell this thing at the end I put a center point constraint on this but that wasn't needed I use a lot of hotkeys. I talk about that. I'll sometimes read off what the hotkey is that I'm using. The an easy one for you, you know, using the L key to start a line is a lot easier than doing something, going up here, clicking line, coming back down. So find the keys that you or find the commands that you find yourself using the most, and then try and try and learn what the hotkeys are. You'll save yourself a lot of time. L for line, D for dimension, C for circle. Those are right off good ones to know let's see um, question uh, some questions about like other parts for the most part it's, it's kind of hard to answer those type of questions during during this so we'll stick to mainly the projects we're talking about today uh, the kitty home yet no next that's Saturday next this coming Saturday is when I'll when I'll have go pick her up bring her back can you modify Benchy to a jet ski to make it easier? It's not easy to modify an STL file. It's you can do it. It's just not a good way to do it. So, and it, it doesn't really, it kind of has the shape, but it's not really the shape you'd want. So it's, it's not that difficult to draw. It's just, you know, you want to try and figure out those, those multiple, multiple, arc curves to try and get everything right so that's all so let's make this a let's make this a two inch drum total so we're going to hit d for dimension and since we're going to revolve this thing i need this to be the radius so that'll be a 25 millimeter radius it's a that's about an inch let's make the opening let's go 15 millimeters that'll give us a 30 millimeter opening and let's make this whole thing like uh, 35 millimeters tall. Kind of a random dimension there. And put a fillet in a couple of spots. Don't need one there. Put those as five millimeters for now. So we'll revolve around that as our axis. That clearly is not a good looking shape. So the good news is, is that we can modify that. We'll take a look at, well, we're not too far off, but 
but it's just not quite there. It needs to be a little bit taller at least, I would say. That's closer, close enough. And now, like I was saying, we can use things like this shell tool up here. We're going to open that one and then we're just going to say three millimeter shell. So you can see then that basically opens everything up on the inside. You could have drawn all the lines and done all that to, to shell it yourself, but I'm going to draw one more line out here. And we're going to call this 28 millimeters. And I'm just doing this so that we don't have this kind of funky looking top that we revolved. Why is it not? Oh, because it pulled that sketch in a weird spot. We're just going to make a cut down just to make things look a little, a little cleaner on the drum. Uh, what was the KOH car on your home background screen? Or was that a KOH? Car? Yes, that was the, the winner's car, Josh Blyler, Big B Motorsports. That was from KOH this year. So that was why it was there. So since this is a cement mixer, we should probably put some sort of paddles on the inside, I would think. I wonder what the... This is... So... Making paddles on the inside is a somewhat interesting situation. We have to kind of figure out how we want to do this. None of these projects I put a ton of thought into before we start modeling these, just because it's, I think it's one of those things that's better to do on the fly to show the, the thought process more than anything. Now, technically, I think those have, they'll have kind of some sort of curve to them when they're actually in there. And we could, we could do that, or we could just make this. Oops. I'm just going to put something in there so that it looks more reasonable when it's 3D printed. Put a five millimeter radius there. And then the only other thing I want to do is put a small radius on the inside just to make it a little easier for the printer to move around. We'll go back to the comments for just a second, see what everyone's saying. I posted my one tenth CJ on scale builder's guild today, but it's a leaf sprung build. This will not be a leaf sprung build. Did he really say close enough? This is a lot, there's a lot of close enough, especially in 3D, you know, for this type of stuff, scale details. We're not doing things that are tolerance fit. We're just gonna, we're just gonna run through it. And now let's just do a, uh, no, we'll just do a quick mirror. We're gonna not do faces, but features. 
mirror plane would be the right Brahma plane. Couple of paddles in our cement mixer. What do you know? Now we do need to make sure that this has something to mount to. So I want to keep a nice large area on the bottom to make sure that this 3D prints easily enough and, and is somewhat clean. I don't know why that wanted to. So we're going to put a relief in the bottom and then we'll have the other part kind of key into it a little bit more. Let's do a eight millimeter. Like when it does that. Fusion 360 gets a little weird with planes. So we're going to cut up three millimeters for now. That'll cut into the main chamber, but keep us right between that for now, which is okay. We're going to give ourselves two millimeters of wall thickness. Go up four. Ah. And this is just going to be kind of a reinforced area where we're going to have a pivot for this thing that kind of, so it can ride on the surface rather than just doing a three millimeter screw that goes in there. That three millimeter screw, I think that the 3D print could want to kind of, kind of wiggle around on there a little bit too much. So that's why I wanted to create something a little bit more robust. And hopefully that is more clear in a moment. Go up four more millimeters. And lastly, we're going to put a 2.5 millimeter hole all the way through the center. And that's going to be for our threaded M3 screw or our M3 screw to thread into, I should say. So see, screw, there we go. Uh, the paddles in the real mixer don't go that far towards the middle. Well, that would be an easy fix. Let's just make an adjustment. Uh, maybe go further back. So I didn't even have a dimension on that. So let's just, that was 17. Let's go 13. Shape it a little bit more away. It did give us an error when we mirrored it. Let's see why. Don't know why. Let's reselect the features. It is not liking to select a couple of those other features. That's okay. Let's drag this back and then we'll just
we'll just do them at the same time. Sometimes when things act funny, it's just easier to work around it. Do a recess for a bearing. I, I mean, that's getting pretty fancy. I guess technically you could. I mean, technically you could use like a, what is it? A 3.8, 2.5 millimeter bearing on this pocket. We just made that pocket a little bit shallower. But you would still have to, to connect it. And then, it, you know, so it'd still have to spin. It's getting pretty. <laughs> That's getting pretty ridiculous for our, our 3D printed cement mixer. Uh, stick a bearing holder on there, make that baby spit. Yes, I see. Make it fit a 5 by 8 by 3.5. Yeah, that's what it is. Or 2.5. And it's a little tall. Man, all right, fine. Cool. 32, let's go. You know, the last time I used a cement mixer it was a really long time ago. I don't know what this thing is freaking out about with these. I don't. Oh, it lost my sketch plane was all. Okay, there we go. So now we've got shorter, narrower blades on our hokey little 3D printed cement mixer. So that's the drum. We're going to we're going to bypass the bearing for now. Wire 3D gear. We could do gears and bearings and all this, but this we're trying to not be here all night. Plus, I've got a whole nother project I want to get done. So Instead, we're going to start our second body now, which is going to be for the actual like cradle arm. So that was an eight millimeter. So we're going to go 7.5 on this piece. We're going to do a 3.2 millimeter here so that the M3 screw doesn't bite into this piece. It'll slip fit and then just only attach to the... So we were at... We're gonna go to five millimeters. That gives us just, uh, we can go to... Ah, uh, no, let's go five. One millimeter of extra, oops, and on that, I want to make sure that this stays a separate part. So we need to go to new body on the right side here on our feature panel and drag down, say new body. And let's, so this one's got kind of a, a tubular portion that goes down and around this whole thing. So we're going to do somewhat tubular. We, we need to make sure that it's somewhat beefy enough to hold this thing. And still 3D prints fairly well. So we're going to 3D print on the, or we're going to sketch on this plane. Keep it fairly tight to the drum. I guess we only need to, we're gonna sketch half of it and mirror it again. And how far do we need to go up in comparison? Just 
about halfway. I suppose they're trying to keep it somewhat even, weight-wise. Doesn't need to have much of a mount. We'll need to, we might have to come back and figure out exactly how we want to mount this. But first, let's make sure that we've got a thickness that's reasonable. Three millimeters is, that's too thin for 3D print. Four, what? Steel here. Get some constraints added to this. L for line, and then X is a construction line. Toggle. So it's not a line that we're going to make a profile out of, but we want to use it to kind of make some geometry. So four millimeters, we'll put a four millimeter radius on the inside and an eight millimeter on the outside then. Give us a partially tubular design. And up here, we're gonna go eight again. That's gonna be an area we're gonna to use to mount this thing as well. Now let's give ourselves some sort of dimension here. And then we need to make sure that this and that are touching. And let's put a distance on this. Six millimeters should be enough for that. Part. We've got a blue line here, which means it's, oh, it's just because we don't have a horizontal constraint on it probably. There we go. So we'll select our sketch elements to mirror and then mirror them about that center line. And now we'll have a cradle. So we're going to do a two sided or a symmetric actually would be easiest on this. And then distance will go three. That's going to work. And then to give it a simulated tubular look, we'll just put, we'll select all these edges and we're going to put a small radius on this thing. Let's go 1.5. So gives it a little bit of a radius look, but not totally. So now it still has a little bit to sit on actually 1.25 even gives us a little bit of a base for it to sit flat on the bed and then kind of build up from there. It should be able to build that radius without any support. So I'm not super worried about that. Well, I do want to add a little bit of radius work around these edges as well. We'll make it look a little bit better. All right. Now down here though, you see how we have these, these two portions kind of sticking out. I'm going to turn off that first, the drum. So we've got these portions sticking out. Now, if you're trying to lay this flat on the bed, those wouldn't allow you to lay flat. They would interfere. So you wouldn't be able to 3d print this laying totally flat. But if we select both of those and then just do a cut through now that'll lay perfectly flat. We still have plenty of area there. One thing we haven't done is we need to cut through for our M3 screw. So that will mount. Let's do some cutting for this to mount to the 
other portion. L for line, X for construction. Draw this so I can draw a center line, then hit C for circle. And do that, hit X. D for dimension. This needs to be 2.5 for threads. And now we're gonna have this cut all the way through. But now we don't have the other one shown and technically it would be cutting through there. So if we turned it back on, you can see it's putting a hole through the drum, which we don't want because it wouldn't spin. Well, at least if you ran too long the screw. But instead on our drop down here, we're just gonna hit objects to cut and we're gonna turn off body one. So now you can see it doesn't, doesn't trim that. One, there's a hole, no hole. Hole, no hole. So now it put a hole through both sides, but not the drum. Simple and easy. And now we just need to do frame and legs and where the motor portion of this thing would be. And then we gotta put the arm on it. But let's figure out how to break this down. So looking at this photo, the legs here, how they kind of spread out, that is, we almost need to figure out how to do that so that we can print this thing reasonably. So we almost want to lay that flat and then bolt some wheels on separately and then figure out how to kind of attach this center bar to that portion and maybe make that center bar and this left side leg one piece. So let's start with that approach. We're going to start over here, make sure that we Put a mount for that. Start with something. I'm just gonna put some, put some vertical lines in this for now. I'm gonna turn that first body off. So we've got tangent constraints. These also show per perpendicular or parallel, sorry. That's what that little constraint line means there. But we want to make sure that these are also horizontal. So now they turn black, you can tell they're fully defined. We do want to make sure that there's an area for us to bolt the crossbar to just drawing something in there to give us something to come back to the down leg will make an area for an axle a little bit of an up and we'll have a, a cross brace between them Make these sure these two are parallel. Oops. Some dimensions on these things. Let's take this to that corner. Do you need to make sure that and you get these things constrained into place properly so that we don't have to keep fighting that. Point. There we go. Now we'll figure something out. Put 
put a height on this. 48. Now let's go to 50. 50 is a good number. This is going to be where our axle mounts, so don't need to make it too tall. Putting a couple of more dimensions on here for reference. Cross brace. That's four. This was eight overall. So that means this should be two if centered. Let's see what uh oh, we need to uh make sure that we have a little bit of clearance there for everything to rotate through easily. Probably don't need that much. What I'm interested in is if I'm looking at the radius that that arm's gonna swing. Just to make sure that it clears, and it would basically clear within its own radius, which is nice. So even seven's plenty. I can keep it a little tighter. Wow, well, let's not get let's not get greedy and try and make it too tight. So we have this, let's work on some more mirroring of these legs because I don't think that we're going to run into too much of an issue with this design so far. Select that, mirror it based on now let's just extrude some of these profiles. Need to make sure that it's a new body. It's like Gene just says up there that he got a new, his first 3D printer, an Ender 3. It's a solid first printer. The printers have come so far. They're so much better than they used to be for so much less money. Ender 3 is just a Solid choice of something that's going to get you a good start into the incredibly fun hobby of 3D printing. So I'm going to put a few radii around here to clean things up, make it look a little bit more purposeful and polished rather than just thrown together like it actually is. That looks like a looks like something. Josh gave up on his mustache. It's disappointing. <laughs> that that was a that was a one week trial just just for the entertainment factor just to freak everybody out everywhere. So that's going to work there. That's again, that's just this, this thing here. We can't make things too thin. We could technically try and hollow things out on the inside or the backside, but I don't think we're gonna do that. Now this like motor enclosure it has here on the side, we'll do that and I think that we'll try and make it 
so that it kind of hides some of our hardware as well, just, just because. But most importantly, let's work on, we need to get this other cross, berry, cross brace figured out. So we are going to, I think our front plane, yes. So we're going to work off of that. We went, we went too far at first, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. Let's say five, uh, let's go to six. Cause we got to put some hardware in this. Is that what, did we use six millimeters on the other one? Let's, I need to check that. I think I used seven, didn't I? No, 6.5. That'll kind of square us up between betwixt that, that rectangle that we used to, for the purpose of mounting. Now, one thing we want to do is that right here, as I'm kind of drawing this, I'm making this look like I'm putting it right to that edge. And that's probably not a great idea. I should give myself a little bit of tolerance just because how everything goes together, you don't want to have to like really force it. So I am going to draw a line from let's see. And then I'm just going to give myself one millimeter of additional space. So when it actually all gets assembled, I'll, you know, kind of have like a half a millimeter per side for everything to fit together and everything to just, just start to, you don't want everything just so tight that any tolerance of a, a 3d printing or some, you know, flashing on your 3d print just makes everything more difficult to draw or to assemble. So if you pay attention to that, you can be a little bit more comfortable. So we did six millimeters of height. I'm going to try and stay with that for the width. This is going to be a new body. Ooh, that's, we did a symmetric. So this needs to just be three to give us what we're looking for. Looks like it's colliding through there for some reason. Let me go back and modify that. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. That's one of those things that before we're done, we'll go back and use the intersection or the interference tool just to make sure that we're, we don't have a lot of that. Two millimeter radius looks fine. 1.5 will do though. So this one, uh, technically, just looking at it. So on the one that we've got here, technically this side is just flat bar in that same plane. We're going to so then a foot. <laughs> do we want to try and make that all? I think we do. We're going to try and make kind of design this in that same in that same idea. I think it'll be a interesting exercise even because we're going to 
we're going to come up with a separate foot. We want this all to 3D print easily. Or So this is very simple. We're also going to, can we pull that? So if you use the P key, then you can project or grab a circle from something else to bring it in. I did that here, but technically I need to make sure that that's 3.2 millimeters. So we have a pass through. So needed a little bit larger than the one that we brought in, but it's fine. This is going to be print as part of that piece. The only other thing that we need to do is I'm going to come up with a way to mount a foot on here. That's easy to print. So good there. I put a taper angle on it by accident rather than putting six millimeter. So I don't want to hit join or do I, can I hit join? Yes, I can hit join because the only one it's touching is this cross piece. I wanted to make sure I didn't hit join if it was also resting against this bar because it would all just become one big problem. But we should be good. Yep. Go back in and put some Radiuses, radii on that. Take a two second break and read some comments because I'm What are the system requirements for 360? You can get away with a pretty basic laptop. You don't need anything crazy. You can, it'll run pretty efficiently on a lot of systems. Um, with a small motor to turn to make, well, well, to make it make cement. Again, we could do, we'll do a fun, we'll do a functional project here before too long. This one, simple. Um, what about, Mac or Chrome. Oh, uh, it will work on Mac. I don't think it works on Chrome OS. So I'm pretty sure that you, you need a, uh, either Mac or PC, but you don't need a Chromebook. I don't think will work. It needs to go low enough to account for the wheels. Oh, you are SFL. Thank you. You are correct. We do need to make sure that we do that. Let's draw the wheels. Since you uh, mentioned that, we probably would have caught it at that point, but regardless, great suggestion or great point to point out. I forgot we were even putting wheels in this thing. 2.5 millimeter hole, you need it on both sides. I'm not gonna cut it all the way through. Instead, I'm just gonna go in five mil. Yes. And I think we'll we'll mirror that. Well, we'll just, let's just mirror it now. We don't need to do anything else to this piece particularly. So features, mirror that, plane. It's going to put the hole over there for us in there. Now let's build a very simple wheel. We're going to 
Well, we need a 3.2 millimeter inner hole to put that in the wrong plane. It did. Where did it put it? Or no, it just didn't center it. I don't know what it's doing. Uh-oh. It's freezing on me. I hope we don't lose this. I've never had this crash on me like this. Let's go back to the comments for... Oh, it did crash. That is a bummer. Use the wheels from the go-kart. We could do that. Let's see if we recover this document first. Otherwise, we're just going to go on to project number two. Oh. Sometimes it'll give us recovered documents because I didn't save my CJ grill either. Awesome. And it looks like it did. Let's save like a smart person. And let's save my, uh, Oof. That was close. Let's see about open our go-kart. Because, like you were saying, we can reuse parts that we... I, this is what I get for not saving it a logical name. I just made something up at the time. Go-kart. I saved it as go-kart. I just scrolled past it. So, inspect. What was my outside diameter on this? Nine millimeters? That's kind of small. What were these? Oh, wait. Was that a nine millimeter radius or nine mil? Radius was nine. 18 millimeters. Okay, that's plenty big. But... One thing is, can we save that body? Will it let me? I don't think that it's actually, I don't have it saved in a way that I'm going to be able to bring that in here easily. But what I can do is just draw a placeholder circle. Well, let's make sure. Does this have a dish on the back? No, it is flush. Okay. All right, so we are going to use that. It's 18 millimeters tall, but one thing I'm going to do is we're going to put a half of a millimeter boss on this. And that's just going to be so the wheel doesn't rub against the, uh, against that as much. So it's just a simple thing. That'll give us just a little bit of spacing so that everything doesn't rub. Uh, features. So a little bit there. And now what I'm going to do is create a 18 millimeter diameter circle. And that is purely so that I make sure that didn't come out right. Because I need to make the foot on the other side.
I need to make sure that it's at the correct level. We're not going to draw anything with that, but inspect. I don't know why that is giving me such a ridiculous number. There we go. 5.153. I don't know how that worked out. Okay. So I need 5.153 to add down to that, but I'm going to make couple of circles. We're going to make that mounting foot a separate piece. Probably don't need two feet. We'll get away with one. What just happened to our sketch? I can't tell you exactly what happened there. I don't know how it just deleted what we did. Or is fine. It needs a trailer hitch mount. Ah, oh, that's that style. I I get where you're, I see where you're going with. So let's. So let's get this dimension here. This was that five point one five three millimeters. That's where our pad needs to be for this foot. Let's give it a 15 millimeter foot. Sounds good. Let's go two sides. We'll go eight one way and two the other. I guess that needs to be a negative two. And do that so that we can put a bit of 
taper cut on this as well. I still need to add the mount to it, but we'll get there. Go symmetric with a cut. I guess let's just let's just do this the easier way. That's not the one. We're just going to put the hole in from the bottom. We'll hide it. Way easier anyway. We're gonna have to countersink this, but not a problem. We'll just that needs to go up negative five point one. What was that number? Ah, uh, doesn't matter. Drag it further up, and then make sure it's only oh, I see. Now how's my cut still there? This needed to be a new body. Excellent. When I changed that to a new body, it changed how my projection was that I used for. All right, back on track and almost done. So we've got that. Now we just need to make a cut on the bottom to actually thread into. 2.5 and lastly we'll just put a chamfer on the bottom two millimeters at 45 degrees will give us enough of a chamfer for a flathead three millimeter screw So now we've got, we we'll use the wheels from the go-kart last week, put us flat on the ground. Let's turn the cement mixer back on. And the only thing we need to do now is we need to add a screw attachment for that. Let's change our visual style so that we can see we need the with hidden edges. So now that we can see where we, Sketch on that. Tear. I'm going to turn off that so that I can pull in that body. 
I used the P for project button so that that popped back up. Now I can actually change my visual style back to the visible edges only. But now I just know exactly where that thing is so that I put the hole in the right spot. First hole. Okay. All right, now those two can attach. We need to create the motor portion, which we're going to simplify that. That thing is all curved and unreasonable for what we need. What's going on, Matt? Matt's in here so he can help. Uh, he can help field all these tech questions that you guys have. So we're going to make this piece attach with that screw that we used over there. Just use both of them. That's too big. We'll use it to hide that one. How about that? Um, 20, sure. 20 sounds like a good number. Vertical constraints, just to make sure everything's centered up where we need it. This thing is all for aesthetics, so we really don't have to be all that careful. We're going to extrude this out. 10 millimeters, make sure it's not a join, but a new body instead. Let's go further. 15. Make a cut on the side just to give it some shape. Let's make sure that we add a counter bore for that piece of hardware. Seven, we'll keep it a little tighter. So, counterboard. Oh, forgot. I did not grab both profiles. See, we didn't get that one right there. Come in and clean up work. That's really about all we need for that. The only thing is, is that we could do a simple, uh, actually, for this, what I'll do is I'm going to throw the uh, steering wheel from the go-kart on it from last week. Little small, but fine. Simple. That's how we're going to call that thing. Because that's all it needs. But I'm going to go through and I'll add those parts from last week, make sure that I get all of that uploaded, and then I'll fix the... Uh, I'll fix the, what do you call it? Like the images that we upload with just to kind of show exactly what the final piece will look like. But I'll do that once it's all, once it's all wrapped up. But this is gonna be an easy 3D printable cement mixer because we all needed one of those.
done. We'll add a couple of these parts to it before we finish it. Steering wheel and some wheels and it will be done. I did apply some uh, some textures to this last time after I finished up just to make it so you kind of see what things were gonna look like when it's done. If you ever want to do the same, you can go into the appearance tab by hitting A. That'll pull up all of this and then you can go in and just start, you know, go to bodies or components, click that and make that red and that blue. You know, there's all kinds of, all kinds of different components in here. And you can also change the colors if you want, you know, there you go. Multicolor cement mixer, all of the best colors. I need a power trowel. Oh, those are kind of cool. That's the big fan one with the motor on top. All right, let's go on to our second project, which was just going to be a very simple welding cart. Now for that, I haven't I had pulled up this one here earlier, which was the Harbor Freight Special, of course. I think that is a simple option for us, and I think that's going to work out quite well. What about a shale, a scale shopping cart? Oh, the shopping cart does sound cooler. Man, I like your shopping cart I bet idea better than Hmm, I think we're going to pull an audible. <laughs> I I think that I think that the shopping cart is I mean, the mesh thing, I know some of these printers will do it. Oh, don't forget the HD. I should I should. I'll make sure I put an HD on there somewhere. I'll put it over on this. Man. The, so I know people print 3D print the milk crates and that's a common thing. Um, you know, these things, this is kind of like 3D printer hell, honestly try and 3D print a shopping cart. I can see this being a really annoying, ooh, we could do this one. We could just knock that one. Uh, that's a better idea and sounds like fun, but also sounds like a, uh, oh, man. I think we're gonna have to, I like that idea, but we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to go with something different. We could a wheelbarrow to go with it. Okay, let's just, let's change it up. We don't have to do with what we said in the beginning. We can just do it. Oh. The chunkiest target cart. That's what I was thinking as well, but it's still just with all of the mesh. I think it would just be hell on uh, hell on one of the on the printers. I mean, just a simple wheelbarrow like that would work out pretty well, wouldn't it? I think so. And how do we want? So I'm just looking at how to break this thing down into easy three. I'm thinking of the two handles all the way to the front, just making that like one big a frame. And if we printed that with the top side is actually the bottom, we could print these legs 
all in one. And then we would really, we wouldn't need much else. So Gene Master, a pallet jack. I like that as well. But let's do the wheelbarrow. We'll stay on, we'll stay more on a theme tonight just because why not? So, and then I like the pallet jack idea. And then I'm, I'm gonna do the welder. We'll do the welder and the other thing maybe another night. Um, just because that's one that's, so let's pick, uh, I'm gonna draw a couple of lines here. Yeah, we're gonna call that angle. 15 degrees. So finish that sketch. I'm going to try and we need to create a plane, plane at an angle. Actually, I think we can just do that. Select the line. Should do that. Perfect. So now we're just going to it's getting a little long there. Up front, how wide do we want the front of this? Twenty millimeters? Let's do 10 and we'll mirror it because that's our favorite thing to do. And in the back, let's say, let's say 50. Overall length on a 80 millimeters. I think 80 sounds reasonable. Maybe we'll go to a hundred, four inches. It's not 10. So that then let's offset everything negative six, negative Negative four. That. Ah, these needed to be What constraint is messing with me here? There we What did I do for width? I think I did four millimeter. Okay. So we're going to start that. So actually I probably need to make that bigger than four millimeter. If we're going to put a three millimeter hole through this thing, put our wheel through it. I need this to be six. We'll flip it to the outside and we're going to go to 120. that. 
but I'm just thinking, I just want to make sure that we've got enough. And I can add a little boss above it for the axle too. I think that we, we will do that. Just right. One thing I need to double check is wheel placement and tire size. So we've got this item, this area here. So tire size, 25 millimeter overall, about an inch. So Thirteen five, that'll work. I'm going to do a couple of circles. And we're going to do, well, we're going to do 2.5 millimeter, but we're going to, we're going to make one side a little bit larger. Go to six. down a little bit we're gonna go symmetric and we're just gonna actually bring that all the way out that's not gonna be a, a through axle like that I'm just doing that for now then we're gonna do sketch here Clicked P for project. We're going to undo that. Instead, we're going to project these lines. Close that off up here. More there. I just need to get those outlines so that I can just doing this the quick and dirty way. Cuts through. And now I'm actually second guessing that. I'm going to we're going to change that. I want to give myself a a flush a flush axle mount. So let's bring that redo it. So that'll give us a flat area on the inside to actually slide our wheel into, and then we'll put a long screw through it. And now before we forget, I'm going to cut through this side with a 3.2. So that way it slides through this side and threads into that side. One thing you need to look at, I guess we won't technically have our screw sitting flush on this side, which maybe we'll remedy as well, but just all of the things that we're looking at now. 36 millimeter, anything longer than a 35 millimeter screw starts getting a little long, so it'll probably be all right. We'll figure it out from there. 
Okay, non-printer owner question. Does the 3D printer plot automatically on how to go about printing? So it doesn't, it, no, not normally. It'll bring it in. Sometimes things will, or some programs might help you auto orient a little bit, but once you've 3D printed a little bit, you'll get the, the hang of it and you'll start understanding what ways may be easier or better to print. And you can kind of just move them around and, and do that. Maybe at the end of this, I'll open up the software that I use, bring in some of the items, and then I'll show you kind of how to, how we move things around a little bit. Okay. So we did that. I want to add these legs here around the bottom. I want to add them onto this piece here. So let's start a sketch on this outside. We need to one thing. I'm turning that sketch on that I did earlier just because I need these feet to go down to the level of, of that one. More close at least. Let's see, we'll go a little bit of a foot and up. Now let's just do three. That well, we'll throw the radiuses, radii on it in a bit. Keep it at four. It'd be a little bit shy of the other one, but that'd be fine. We may make this so that it needs a little bit of support material at the end. I mean, it could probably print most of this without, but if you print it with support, probably be better. Now let's mirror that feature. So Now the one thing is, is that we are drawing these things that kind of a, you know, they're skewed to each other because they're square to these skewed, whatever you call them, spars of the wheelbarrow, but that'd be all right. We just have to make a couple of, couple of changes as we go to make sure that everything becomes square to itself. Well. We're going to do inside outside radius. We'll do three on the inside, six on the outside. There. Let's create a new plane. We're gonna do plane through two edges, I think. We're gonna do this edge and this edge, and then we can draw something on that 
without having to try and match everything up specifically. So we're going to draw, let's hit P for project first and just grab those two lines. That way we know we're right on those. We're just going to make kind of that back panel area or brace that you would see. Make sure that these are both We'll choose the height to be 12, because why not? 12 from the top. Call this a join. And three millimeters in should do just fine. So gives us the brace and around the back. So this piece, I'm imagining this, you'll print this plane flat on the 3D printer bed. You'll be able to print everything up off of it. And you'll probably want the support material for this area as well. A lot of good printers will bridge that far. Uh, you know, you'll get maybe a little bit of a sag, but they'll do it. Either way though, you print with a little bit of support and it's going to be in an area that's going to be fairly well hidden. I think you'd be better off doing it that way. So I'm going to do a little bit more cleanup on this just because it's four there. Let's do eight on the front. One thing we could do is throw like a or a one millimeter radius on the top, just kind of knock that down, make it look a little bit, a little bit better. So now we need to do a couple of things. First thing I want to do is make more of a traditional looking handle. Four. Just trying to get everything centered. Oh. Go 10, just to create something that looks more like the handle you're expecting. Taper it into it. You'll throw the smallest of radiuses, radii on the outside. Let's go back to 12 on those. Oops, not 123. There we go. Okay, now let's do our the barrel part of it. <laughs> so 
So let's do this on the right side. Far, not too much past the, isn't that handy? So not too far past the uh, lower sports, lower legs, you wanna have it? My legs are maybe a little bit far back compared to that one. We could move those or we could just leave it. Guess which one I'm gonna do. Let's see. Need to get the top flat, take it basically all the way down to the tire. Let's get this level. That's getting pretty close. put a dimension on it. No, not too far. Thank you, Alex, for taking care of spammers. Appreciate it. I think Nicole made you a moderator the other day and that is very helpful. <laughs> So I didn't. So we're just going to, we're going to go symmetric new body and drag that out. Now this does have Oh no, it's, well, it's got a little bit of a draft to it. Not terrible, not a ton at least. So let's do something like that. So let's do a I'm just thinking that we can get away with a draft cut on this. Just creating a couple of lines. Let's see if we can do that. So we're going to Oh, I see why I didn't want to do it. But So we have this taper angle over here, and this is what I want to play with. Let's see if I do 10. Nope. Ten degrees is probably more than we're looking for. So I think that that's going to work just fine, but we need to modify our our area that we're cutting. We're going to 
oversize this a bit so that our taper cut Parallel, okay. Now let's see if that works. I drag that cut up and we're going to put a taper on it of negative five. So that's going to give us that little bit of flare out of the, the wheelbarrow. Should, yep, it's only cutting one body, so we're good. Oh, but why didn't, I don't know why it did not select that plane where I thought it was, but that's okay. We can do two sides. And then the other one, we're just going to have to go down a very small amount. Shouldn't touch anything else still. Bizarre. But also a pain. We match the taper though, both ways, that's going to work. So we're going to mirror that feature. Gives us that. Now we need to put some pretty heavy radii on this. Now this one does have a more of a rounded front nose and I think we're gonna, we wanna try and do that. Let's, let's try it. Try and not be so corner cutting. Do an arc, three point, let's hide that other body. Oh, let me see what I did. Okay. Thought I had hit new body on that, but evidently I did not the first time. So we're going to see if we can let's grab an arc, three point arc. Let's just, uh, Something like that. Try to oversize it. Let's see if we can do a cut. And we're going to select the direction. Oh no, not we're not gonna do this one. We're going to do a sweep. So profile, we're going to select this area and then the path, we're going to select one of these uprights like that. There we go. That's similar to the outcome I was looking for. Now let's go throw some heavy radiuses on these corners. that and lastly this bottom I like that uh -oh. Josh have you see where guys take the old school steel wagon wheel barrel bodies and make go I have seen that 
oh, we could combine our projects from the last couple of weeks, right? So now that we did that, let's use this shell, select the top, do a three mil, how about two mil? Print that thing fairly thin. And now we have something that kind of looks like a wheelbarrow. Let's do, let's do one more thing. Let's go with, does this one have a, it, do, it, yeah, it does have that, that kind of lip around it. So first let's create a sketch on this top P for project. Let's grab all of the outside. It might not do all the outside. So let's just do like that about half of it. Then let's create a sketch on the right plane. And let's do let's take it down. And I'm going to overlap it a little bit purposefully. So now how does it mount? Well, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get to that. I'm not forgetting it yet. So we're going to do this. Let's call this thing. Um, 1.5. Out like that. Now again, we're going to go sweep. Select that as our path or our profile, and then our path. We're going to select that and make sure that it's a join. Or let's not do a join. Let's do a new body. Or I'm going to. We'll try this first. We're going to do a join first. I'm going to see if I can mirror it and have it overlap without a problem. So we have that. Now let's do a mirror. Select that. Select our plane. Oh, I did it. Uh, something's funky. Okay. I'm going to do it the other way, the way that I was going to do it. So. Oops. Here we go. Edit. And we're not going to do a join. We're going to do a new body. Hit OK. We're going to go to the top. And we're going to create a sketch on the top. And all I'm going to do is Cut this thing in half, basically. Symmetric both ways, cut, but we're only going to do that last body as a cut. Why is it not showing up? I'm hitting OK, but I'm not. Something's up. Oh, I just didn't select everything. So now it cut everything to the midpoint. Now I'm going to go do a mirror. We're going to select the body that face right. Now it put that lip all the way around it for us and it merged it better in the center. And then we're just going to go up here and we're going to do a combine tool. And we're going to select the two lips, two lips, and the top. Now, like I said, I kind of overlap, like I didn't perfectly match up the top lip and that. So I wanted that so that I could create just a bit less of a hard part to print. So I'm just going to create a big old square. And C 
cut straight up. That's bizarre. Why did it do that? Still don't understand why I have that, but I'll fix it before I upload. Now this whole thing, I would print upside down. And I don't think that you will, I think you could probably get away without support material. Or if you want, you can print it with the, with the, the bottom down and actually you'd still be able to, other than that last lip we added, which let's throw out there. If we do it with that, you'll probably get away without support material around that as well. Be fine. Okay, now we need to make a mount for it. So let's hide that top body. Let's do it right at that cross piece. We don't have to be very precise about this. Do something like that. Might as well throw a, well, we can wait. About like that. Now, create another sketch. We're just going to put measure a couple of these out. Tens, fine. putting these in the same spots and then we're going to put select them both equal we're going to have the screws go from the top down Like that. Gotta make sure we get the correct circle. Three point two. Sure that it's only cutting the first one. So now you can bolt that thing in. What am I? Let's. Oh my God. Let's see where these comments went. Um, did anyone bring up the pack mule reference while Nicole? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, they did. <laughs> um, should do a doghouse or a couch, man. <laughs> Let's see. The front of the bucket should be even with the bumper. That is the front. Oh, you're right. Hmm. That is, that's a good point. Let's see how much modifying. It 
is it? Let's just see. I don't know if we're going to be able to get there or not. Didn't blow up too bad. So that worked out okay there. I think that sketch needs to be updated. But I think that that was a good suggestion and one that needed to be taken care of. I don't know why. That mirror doesn't look right. Something is up with my path on that. Maybe we'll just, let's try and, uh, let's try and just do this thing fully. Okay, it worked better that way anyway. Oh, I see what's going on. See, sometimes when you make big modifications like that, things get all messed up, but it's usually worth it in the end, so. why that is. Oh, I think it lost the sketch plane. Redefine sketch plane. All right, there we go. That was a much better suggestion and worth the, put another brace, bottom brace on it, so the barrel has four mounting points for better scale function. <laughs> yes, I, yeah, I mean, I guess it could get a little wobbly. Look 
me back to that. Um, guess we could just drag this one further back like that. And then throw another one in here somewhere. Just make sure that they're equal. Now we gotta make sure that, whoops. There's that now. We'll just do it. We'll just do a center hole on this one though. Why is That's all about. Okay, so we put those in now. Redefine sketch plane. And we just need one more here. match these. All right. I think that that should all function well. We got I think we're in good shape. Oh, we need to make a wheel. We haven't done a wheel yet. Let's wrap that up and call this thing done. Start off on the wrong foot already. We're going to Start off here by going symmetric. Give ourselves a little bit of tolerance. New body. Now, one thing, this sketch here, that inside, well, fine for now. Let's just do a No, nope, it's going to make me draw it. That's fine. I want to make sure that we cut through the wheel so that it spins freely on the screw. And for this type of thing, let's start, start a, since we drew, oh, we didn't draw the wheel on that. I was thinking we drew the wheel on the to symmetric here as well. A 
eight millimeters. And that we'll do uh, three millimeter. That looks like a something like a wheelbarrow. I think that'll do it, right? So, um, before we go, let's just do like we were talking about with the uh, how to bring things in. Uh, well, see, I made a mistake somewhere and joined bodies. So that's fun. Let's figure that out. That's a new body. So we're still in good shape there. Still, hit, let's hit save. Still okay. So this part, all right. Oh, there. Okay. So it was this feature here. Oh, since it was coincident, it joined all of it. We're going to go new body, hit okay. And then we're just going to do a combine of all of that. Now let's see if this is correct. Those two we still need to combine, but the rest will be okay. So, okay, there we go. Now things look better. So anyway, let's, Right, so on the body tree over here, body three, we're going to right click, save as STL, click OK. I'm just going to put it on my desktop. Oh, well, this will just be the, the barrow part of it. And then we'll save this part as the doesn't really matter. And lastly, I did not make this wheel very, I'm going to redo that wheel before we, before I actually upload, just because it's going to be actually hard to upload or how to hard to print because of how I made these standoffs in there. So I'm going to separate those, but We're going to show you the other part of it first, just so that you guys can see how this looks. Give it a second to load. Okay. So I'm using Cura. Everyone's got their preferences of what's best and what's what they like better. I'm going to bring in those two items. And if you just bring them in normally, it brings it in like that. So I don't think that this is the, the way that I would print this. Instead, you can rotate this around like this method, but you might have to try and really work hard if you're trying to do it otherwise. Otherwise, you can use this lay flat um, and it'll lay that down. Now, this one also should be able to just lay this one flat. I don't know why I didn't lay that. Let's select that.
Hmm. Lay it flat that time. I don't know why it freaked out the first time, but that time it looks like it worked fine. So that's how I would print these two items. And then the wheel, like I said, I'm going to fix that so that it sits a little bit better. But you can hit then the slice, depending on your settings. I don't know if I have support material turned on or not. Oh, need the HD on it. Yes, you're correct. I need to do that too. I'll figure out a place to put that. So, so it sliced it. Now you can hit preview and I do not have, <laughs> so things are definitely not laying flat because my brim, my border, is not sitting properly. So this would be a situation where I would say that my software letting me down. Maybe I need to check to make sure. There we go. That should be better. Now let's slice that. <laughs> something up with this one still not wanting to lay perfectly flat If you just keep hitting lay flat, then maybe, just maybe, there, it finally worked. Where Cura does not usually let me down like that. But I think this method here, this will print fairly well. I'm gonna make a few little modifications to this before it's all said and done. But I think you'll end up with a mighty fine wheelbarrow. I think that's going to do it for this stream. A little over two hours, a little bit longer than I want these to be generally, but you know, to start. I also have myself a new CNC router coming so that I'll be able to uh, cut some more like hard style parts and things like that. Probably won't integrate that as much into this series just because that's not something that's exactly as attainable as a 3D printer currently. So. Maybe I'll show some of it, but for the most part, I'll probably try and keep this mainly to 3D printing. So it seems to be what most of you guys have the most of. It, the, you know, seems to go hand in hand with our hobby quite well. But anyway, thanks everyone for joining in. Looks like we had a pretty good crowd tonight. Again, appreciate it. Thanks everybody for the help, the good suggestions, the comments. We'll see you guys next. Well, we'll see you. I've got a, a new video that'll go up tomorrow morning. Then we'll have scale news on Tuesday, Wednesday, Matt and I will be live Friday, probably another kit build. We'll see if I, what I find for kits. Kits are getting a little thin. Anyway, guys, appreciate it. Thanks again. See you on the next one.